we're listening to this guy here. These are these are trumpets power legato. And uh <clears throat> Wagner tuba in a trombone legato. Which sound great. Forso. next here we've also got oh i knew there was something wrong there i need to change this preference so that um when i go on solo it actually my network touch i want to be able to unlatch the so the records where is that one I'll have to do it manually for a little while. So this is as bright as um, the mod wheel gets for Forzo. In other words, that's as max triple forte as it gets. But if you change the articulations to something like crescendos, they end up sounding louder. Um, and we only did trumpets, horns, and tr tenor trombones there, if I change all of them to crescendo here. They can sound louder. And you can make it faster. But it's not um, louder on that long sustain, which is the articulation you'd use for a phrase like that for the most part unless you want a portato give a little bit of da 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 <laughs> we move on to Hollywood Brass, uh, that's going to get you some pretty... I've got all the vintage mics on for Hollywood Brass, so um, I just don't love the sound of the main. So I've got the diamond where you get these vintage mics. I just like them better. Workflow-wise, Hollywood has uh, key switches in different places. So right in the middle of the horn range is the key switches for the Chambasi, the well, I guess it's one, Chimbasso, the tuba, um, but the whole... Getting a click here. Let's get monophonic true legato on here. Come on. Got a little bit of reverb on there, too. And then, uh, by the time we get up to trumpets... Oops, I already key switched something. Now that's mostly... That's all tuba, actually. <clears throat> some chambasi in there, because it's a solo. If we want the horns, 
horns. Yeah, two French horns. Oh, it looks like I key switched into a different articulation. So workflow-wise, you have to really kind of mess with this so that you don't under, uh, accidentally key switch. Also, mixer-wise, this... I brought it down in volume a little bit. Gotta bring it back up. It's really gritty there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, workflow wise, the, I've got that little glitch that's happening. I let go of the key. Take out True Legato, and you can play some chords. Oh, now we have to change the mixer again, because we know we're distorting. Let's keep moving on to native instruments. Now these were recorded by Sound Iron and part of the symphony series. I don't know if these, uh, I think the number of articulations differs from, um, these have a very big warm sound and they can get very bright, um, splatty. There's a, um, I think they're an octave down, so they play the same notes. You get a really big sound coming out of this uh, group here. And um, keep in mind we're 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 copying this phrase. The mixes, Alan Myerson and Junkie XL. The Junkie XL video much. here. They took the perspectives we just looked at and prepared them for the instant Hollywood sound right out of the box. So we'll refresh our memory of what this sounds like. I mean, I was listening to that other chord here. It's not just a minor chord, though. I mean, this, the native instruments has one of the warmest. Mute this. These tubas. The tubas really kind of that not that low end for the native. The sound iron. It's it's pretty dramatic relative to the other packages. And then I don't have the legato on, so if we want to really hear the legato for these top parts... Um, I should probably flip that on just so that we get um, a little bit of apples for apples. And that's a lot of trumpet, so... And I'm just going to adjust the mix a little bit here, or bring the horns out. And 
take the trombones out, actually, and the tubas. This is what I mean by they can get kind of splatty. I mean, it's a big sound. And it can get nice and quiet. So we'll just leave that there for now. Um, I have Audio Imperia Talos Low Brass. I don't have the horns, so I can't show you that. And I um, have the sustains here. Oh, I have to re record. <clears throat> what don't I have working here? Oh, I'm in the wrong octave. <laughs> So I'm at the top range. Um, I think these are the extended notes. So um, in this one, you can hear a little bit of that um, crossover of the of the samples, right around 60% of the mod wheel here. You can hear it enter pretty easily. And then we're out of range, but is there there's a place for me to change that range it is here and i can drag it higher i'll just take the volume up a touch here add some reverb sounds great Again, the mod wheel is really sensitive right around here. Not that it sounds bad, it's just really sensitive. Um, so we'll just do a little recollection. Here they are. So let's just keep moving. Now these are uh, Performance Samples Angry Brass Pro, and they just have Close and Deca mics. I don't think I've done anything to this yet. I need to get them all on the same channel if I'm going to play them together. And, uh, oh yeah. Angry Bass Pro from Performance Samples. That there's a max of a thousand voices and someone's knocking on my door hello who's there your son what would you like my son oh thank you i better get my coffee hang on thank you sweetheart did you have a picture on your coffee yeah it's a little guy isn't it Okay, Daddy's talking to his co-workers. You're my co-workers, aren't you, Internet? All right. I don't think this was my coffee, but that's okay. Sorry about that. So, Angry Brass Pro. Now these have this cool reattack. You can hear a player kind of come back into the fray as he catches his breath and he kind of... It's not quite the same as a sample loop. There. 
There's another one. You can kind of hear them reattacking. So this is as quiet as Angry Brass Pro gets. And I've raised the bass trombones here. Might as well get them back to zero. So they sound pretty awesome. Not quite as, um, I mean, they're pretty consistent. Uh, they're not quite as like round and shapely as some of the stuff I'm hearing in Junkie XL, but um, very usable and very easy to perform with. Audict here um, has a master brass package that um, does not get super loud. I'm losing my trombones and tubas for some reason. <clears throat> I'm going to put the mic on mute while the kids yell on the outside. So very, very pretty, and those eight horns are great with legato, if we just solo those. But this is as loud as it gets. This is as loud as and splatty as it gets. Unless you switch to um, the staccatos. And you get a little bit of lip in there. Um, fast legato. So really nice for... Full mod wheels. That's as that's as um, loud kind of as it's gonna sound. <clears throat> Octave legato. They recorded. Um, So really great for soaring lines. Actually, it's a good time to go to the Orchestral Tools Majestic Horn from there. They uh, <clears throat> they came up with, uh, they, they used a sample library that was previously released by uh, 
Rafael Oliveros, and it sounds like this. Well, let me take out Audict. get some vibrato in there. I forget if there's a place for me to bring that in. Um, but you can bring in other mics. Let's see. Don't purge. Unpurge. The transition of the legato is what one of the things that makes this so beautiful. And this is very inexpensive. Completely controlled by Mod Wheel at its default settings. So I skipped uh, Majestica, which I kind of brought in just to sort of um, show the power sustains here. different articulations to choose from those shorts. Those are the Macarados. Staccatissimos. Sorry, I'm losing focus. Um, so, Majestica's in there. Cage brass shorts we're going to skip for now. Musical sampling trailer brass seemed like a... We're getting into the diminishing returns um, sections here. So let's put these on sustains. These don't have legato. trumpets. So those are the trailer brass. Um, I'm not going to show the session horns. So let's listen to this again. So let's go back to Forzo for a second here. And...
to solo out a trumpet here. One of the things that I actually like about Forzo and its trumpets is the um, smoothness of the sound, the round, sorry. It does not get too splatty or too irritating sounding or too brittle or too bright. Um, but that's a sound you, you know, that's a choice. That's something that you'd want to go for. I mean, it ends there. It's... And you can do little staccato kind of double tonguing types of things. That's about as um, brittle as they get. Here's the crescendos, which get. Uh, it's it's interesting that they recorded the crescendos to get really pretty bright and loud relatively, and they didn't have that more double F, triple F kind of sound in the rest of the package. There's a sforzato. There's a sforzato articulation as well. a little bit of bite. Portados are stronger than some other packages at full velocity and full dynamic. Hollywood has portados that are much uh, mellower. Oops. Um, and then we could do something like orchestral tools and arc. I mean, <clears throat> they don't have trumpets here though. So we, and then let's see, why don't I hear it? Uh, I know there's a reason. Oh, I didn't get this to work before. Um, I feel like my outputs were wrong. Those are nine horns, um, and that's not even a legato, I don't think. Mono? Let's see. Well, it actually does sound like a legato transition, doesn't it? I always forget, I always get confused on orchestral tools saying sustains, but there's actually a legato transition. Um, so let's just do what I just did, which is change the patch forward and back on each of these. <clears throat> Because somehow I loaded these into a preset that isn't doing what I wanted. And now they should all be working on channel one. Again, this is arc one. see the keyboard again let me hide this uh put here uh i can't see the keyboard oh that's because i made the thing too small there we go really nice smooth mod wheel
And there's other arcs. There's um, three has some more uh, some more uh, articulations. Uh, some of it has to do when you when you use the arcs with the way that they grouped the instruments. So uh, A does have or one arc one does have like the tubas, three tubas split out and three chimpanzee split out three trombones. Some of the other arcs, when you get into things like arc four, you get some trumpets, but then you also get like these um, trombone and Wagner tubas and horns kind of in one patch, and you have to sort of poke around for all of the split out um, other groupings, ensemble group sections. But again... Caspian holds its own pretty well. I've got the wide mics on, um, so I just all I did was click wide um, for each of these, and it has a great range from quiet to loud. It's interesting that they skip the tenor trombones and go straight from horns to bass trombones. I think that's fascinating. No, <clears throat> it doesn't look there. They're they're not legato, so if that's something that is important, you're gonna miss that. Let's go back. Well, we're missing a trumpet, aren't we, in Caspian? No, there's three trumpets there. Yeah, it's hard to get a one-for-one one to that particular phrase with Caspian. So this is arc again. Not sure why there's so much room on it. I would have to probably mess with the reverb to make sure that I could get a nice clean ending. Tell deck sound stage. Augmented chords. So arc gives you quite a bit of power too. your um, hearing distortion in there. Sorry about that if you are. I'm seeing red on the main output there. Um, so a lot of people are wondering what Forzo and uh, the Junkie XL sound like, and the, the bottom line is they... <laughs> Forzo sounds, that was arc. Forzo sounds great. Okay, I'll be upstairs right now. And as bright as and big as um, 
Forzo gets. It's not as big as Junkie XL for sure. And what's actually interesting is that if you change the balance and the profile that you're looking for, the NI series actually gets bigger than the Forzo does. It's just bigger on the bottom end. Looks like that. Got them all set to a... Or many of them got uh, set to a different articulation. And they've got triple tonguing and repetitions and a number of cool. Features. It's very low end heavy though. That tuba is just really that tuba is just really overwhelming. Not in a bad way, I'm just it, bottom the bottom is huge on the sound iron. Sounds like I'm having some voices drop out. Is something set to legato. I think something might be set to legato. Yeah, legato's on here and here and here. So sorry about that. I also like that there's motion in the in the sound iron one, but some people don't like the kind of splatty outer range. 